Veshem Hashem Naaseh V'Natsiyach. I dedicate this Dvar Torah for the full recovery of my dear father, Shlomo Chaim Ben Pari. We added the name Chaim to his name. Please continue praying for him. May God heal all the sick people amongst Israel. Amen. This week's parsha is a very important one, Yitro. It's the parsha that we God gives us the Torah, the Ten Commandments. And let's do a quick review. We know that the first of the Ten Commandments is the base of all, because I really, it's like my life's mission. I saw a statistic that 90% of Jews are not familiar with the Ten Commandments, and then I actually questioned personally hundreds of people, and it's a shame. God gave us the Torah directly at the mountain of Sinai, and yet most Jews don't know all ten. So let's do a quick review of the Ten Commandments. The first one is we have to believe in God, that He took us out of Egypt. There's a God, which is the basis of all faith. There's no other gods, no idol worship. The third one is we can't swear falsely, say His name in vain. The fourth one is Shabbat. The fifth one is honor our parents. Sixth one is do not murder. Anybody translates it, do not kill, is trans translating it wrong. You're allowed to kill somebody in self-defense. You're never allowed to murder in cold blood. Lotin af, do not commit adultery. Do not sleep with married women. Do not steal, which here specifically means don't kidnap people. But also it's forbidden, of course, to steal anything. Do not be a false witness. And the last one that I wanted to talk about today is do not desire and be jealous of anything that belongs to your friend. So we know all the commentators have a question on the 10th of the Ten Commandments. Right? To believe in God, obviously, if you don't believe in Him, why should you listen to Him? All of them make sense. But how could God give us a commandment not to be jealous. Jealous is a feeling, it's an emotion. And how could you control it? Either you are jealous or you're not. So the truth is that the specific jealousy that God forbids is do not desire. Like let's say your friend has a very unique piece of jewelry. If you are jealous of it and you twist your friend's arm you pressure him and trick him and compel him to sell it even though he doesn't want to, and you put the money, you're, you went against the Ten Commandments because this is your friend's personal piece of art. You shouldn't try to take it away from him even if you're paying for it. But it goes much deeper, I think, because I had a legal matter yesterday. I saw two people fighting eight years over some money and I think the Torah is teaching us a much deeper value here. When it says, do not be jealous in the tenth of the Ten Commandments, the Torah is telling us something so fundamental. The Torah is very clear when it says, your friend's house, your friend's wife, your friend's donkey, which nowadays is anything that belongs to your friend, you shouldn't desire, you shouldn't want it. I think the underpinning what God is telling us is that there's a very deep psychological lesson here, and that is jealousy is really a sickness when it becomes an obsession up to the point where people are willing, God forbid, to go against. The Midrash says jealousy is so dangerous, it's the last one because if you can't control your emotions and jealousy, you're going to go and murder and kill and commit adultery to take away what's not yours. Now, why do people feel that way? It all comes from putting a way too much value on materialism, on belongings. What God is telling us is, is that do not be jealous because whatever you have in your life is tailor-made uh, for you. And if God wanted you to have more, He would give it to you. If He didn't give it to you, it's not good for you. But even deeper than that is don't even desire your friend's beautiful home, his beautiful car, anything that belongs to them. You know why? Because your value is not based, our human being's value is based on our character, on our integrity, on the good deeds we do, the Torah we study. It's not, it shouldn't be based upon 
Because what goes on psychologically when somebody's jealous? You feel inferior. You feel that, oh, this guy has a bigger house, so he's better than me. No! He has a more beautiful wife, he's better than me. He has a nicer car, he's better than me. No. We know, God forbid, we always hear it on the news, in a time of natural disaster, somebody's house and his entire net worth and belongings could be taken away from him in seconds, in a tornado, in a hur hurricane, in an earthquake. But there's something that is part and parcel of us. Nobody could take it away from us. That's our good heart, our good deeds, our integrity, our spirituality, our kindness, our humility, the knowledge of Torah, the godly knowledge that we study when we study Torah and Gemara and Kabbalah. So I think that's what the Torah is really telling us. It came to me as an epiphany that really the, what the Torah is trying to tell us is don't be jealous of wor worldly, wor worldly possessions, materialistic possessions, because that's not you. The real you is your soul. And the greater your soul is, the more connected it is to the Almighty. That's what greatness is. That what's, that's what value is. That's what awesomeness is. That's what you could be proud of. Because nobody in the world could ever take it away from you. And if we understand this in a deep way, that our mission in this world is not to be an ATM machine and make our one million into two million and have a house with so many rooms that we don't even use or ever enter. I know people like that, that they have such a big house that has so many rooms that they never even use those rooms. No, our mission on this world is to understand God by learning Torah, have a wonderful character, be calm rather than angry, be humble rather than selfish and self-centered. And if we understand that's what our mission is in the world, and God, we believe the first of the Ten Commandments is, which is God gives us everything, and God is the super of the, of the world, hopefully under such a backdrop and understanding, we'll understand that our the, the real value of a human being is not assessed by how much money has in, he has in his bank account or how much, how big of a home he has, how many rooms he has, but rather it's assessed by how wonderful of a human being he is and how connected he is to the Almighty. Please don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day.